Thank you and welcome to my home office. Now, as far as home offices go, it's a pretty nice setup. I certainly like it, but it's really not that remarkable. What's worth mentioning though, is that this has been my office for the last 10 years. In that period, I work 100% remote as part of large traditional corporations with no corporate office anywhere close to me. So through this, I became fascinated with understanding how people work together in general and specifically, how can we get them to effectively work together if they're not in the same location? Now, when COVID hit, we all had to grapple with these questions. We had to switch to remote ways of working. We had to change priorities, pivot projects, and figure out how to serve the changed needs of our customers and employees. And I'm sure every single one of you has some stories to share. And somehow, we made it all work. In fact, by and large, it worked remarkably well. We saw reports of productivity increases and transformation projects that had been bogged down for years. All of a sudden, were completed in a matter of weeks. Now, with vaccines being rolled out, the question becomes, what does the world of work look like once the pandemic fades away? Well, obviously, nobody really knows exactly what the future will look like, but we do know two things for sure. It will not be what it is now, and it will not be what it was before the pandemic. I think in reality, you'll see a whole continuum of possibilities develop. On the one hand, there's companies that will be 100% remote by design. And on the other extreme, the traditional office where everybody is co-located all the time. And what I think we will see is a shift towards flexibility, towards some sort of hybrid solution. But how much of that is going to be unique to every single company? So with this shift to a hybrid world, there's some things we really need to figure out. The initial shift worked well since it was based on existing teams and existing roles. So the question really becomes, how do we deal with new hires? It will be harder for them to learn a job, to learn how things are done around here and to feel like they're part of the team. Secondly, communication. Now, let's face it, that wasn't really our strength to begin with before the pandemic, but it's even tougher in a virtual setting. We would have endless meetings and despite that, lots of misunderstandings. I'm sure you've been in meetings where there's multiple people that speak at the same time. Did you ever really notice it's always the same people that end up doing the talking and the same that end up backing down? This really means it's the loudest opinion that wins, not the best. This is an issue in all meetings, but it's worse in a virtual setting. Lastly, work-life integration. We work all hours. We have early meetings. We have late meetings. We respond to emails and texts in the evening. And this expectation to be always on got it worse with the pandemic. So all of these challenges really existed before the pandemic, but the pandemic definitely made them worse. Um, anxiety levels you'll see are through the roof and burnout is common. This impacts everybody, but especially underrepresented communities. Um, women, people of color, or low-income families, just to name a few. So in short, people are getting left behind. And then companies wonder why their employees are not engaged. But here's the good news. It does not have to be this way. The pandemic offers a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to redesign the world of work. So what if together we can engage all talent from anywhere, not just people from different locations, but also people that struggle with working in an office location, for instance, due to physical or cognitive challenges. What if we can design for the inclusion of all voices? People from underrepresented communities tend to stay quiet because they're in a lower power position. But in addition to that, there's also people that tend to stay quiet because they feel like they're in a lower power position. Think of introverts or people with English as a second language. And what if people can create work-life integration on their terms? Now, these may seem like big statements, but I promise you it's within your control to make some real progress on these today. Let me show you how. See, I think the root of the problem is that we often choose the easy way out. 
Not because we're lazy or stupid, but that's what everybody else does. And that is what you were trained to do. Let me give you an example to explain what I mean. What do we do when we need to solve a problem or make a decision? You call a meeting. You get a bunch of people together to talk through things. And in the meeting, you go off on a tangent and you run out of time. And since nobody took notes, we sort of forgot what we talked about. So we call another meeting. And because of this, your, meeting, your calendar is filled with back to back to back meetings and you compensate by doing your actual job in the evening. So I call it the easy way out because this not, does not require any upfront thought or effort. It's the default option. It's the autopilot. And it feels like you're being productive because you're so busy. Now, when I state it like this, it's obvious that this is not a great way to run things, but it's much worse in a hybrid setting since there's just more room for ambiguity and disconnects to begin with. So here's the big idea. Don't settle for the default. Be more purposeful. Be more intentional. Think of the outcome you are looking for and think of how you can create an environment where you and your people can shine and you, they can deliver that outcome. Is it hard to imagine what this would look like? Let me give you this analogy. So when designing an office building, an architect thinks about how the space will be used. They want to let, have lots of natural light because it makes people happier. They create spaces where people can collaborate. And well, at least in the past, they would try to create a flow in the building where people can bump into each other and connect. And companies would spend millions of dollars on the physical space. But then the people come in with their 1950s management techniques to do the work. So what do you think has a bigger impact, the physical space or the ways of working? So the message is to be more purposeful, be more intentional. Think like an architect and design the actual work to get the best out of people. That is what I'm advocating for. Let's look at three examples. Employee onboarding, communication and work life integration. Let me tell you a little bit about my own personal experience starting a new job. I would show up the first day and they tell me my laptop's not ready. Oh, and by the way, my manager is super busy, so I can get half an hour with them at three in the afternoon. But don't worry, here's a stack of procedures and mandatory HR training that you can work through. Does this sound familiar? Well, I certainly hope not, but I'm afraid it does. In essence, I would be spending my first few weeks on the job acting like Sherlock Holmes to try to figure out what my job is, what I was hired for, and how things work around here. It feels like you're back in high school. You're trying to figure out who are the cool kids and where to sit at lunch. So how can we do this better? How, as a manager, can we be more purposeful and more intentional? Well, first of all, welcome the team. Make them feel valued. Make them feel welcome. Have the tech ready. Uh, give them some company swag, like a pen or a notepad or a mug, or even better, add a personal touch. Um, add a welcome card from the team or a handwritten note from the hiring manager. Show that you made an effort. Secondly, give them the context. Explain the company mission and vision and specifically how the department contributes to this. And also explain how they fit in with the rest of the team. And very importantly, set expectations. What does success look like? Three months, six months, 12 months out. Initially, any new person will need a lot of support since, well, they're new. But at some point, you will expect them to become more independent, more self-sufficient. So think about what are you expecting and when are you expecting this to happen? Now, then obviously, the job itself. Train the job. Give them the tools to learn the job. What do you expect them to know walking in? For instance, if you're hiring an experienced project manager versus somebody fresh out of college, there's just a different set of expectations there. What do you need them to learn? How do they learn that? If pre-pandemic this was done through shadowing somebody, that may not work as well in a virtual setting. And what have previous hires struggled with in the past? Help them build relationships. Give them some footholds to build relationships. Give them a list of 10 people they should talk to and why they should be talking to them. And last but not least, support them. Give them a support system beyond the manager. 
Now, many companies use some sort of buddy system. And a lot of companies do some of these things, but hardly anybody does all of these things consistently. Which, if you think about it, it's kind of strange because, frankly, none of this is hard to implement. It just requires some upfront work. And I promise you that that work actually pays off in spades because you're setting up your new hire for success in the way that you define success for that role. And isn't that what we're all after? Let's talk about communication. My favorite topic. I can talk about this for hours, but I promise I won't. So here's how I would summarize it in this context. Meetings can be a valuable tool, but it shouldn't be the default. So also here, how can we be more purposeful, more intentional? Well, firstly, more asynchronous communication, meaning there's no immediate response expected. And I mean, for real, I don't mean send an email and then get upset because you didn't get an answer in 15 minutes. I mean, short and sweet communication with clear expectations on actions to be taken. I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, this meeting should have been an email. That's really what I'm talking about here. Secondly, more one-on-one -on -one meetings for direct connection. And lastly, as a manager, more ask me anything or skip levels, uh, whatever term you use, meetings with a small group of people. People really love these meetings since they get some face time with you and you get to hear directly from them. Now. When I first started to apply all of these things, I took a long, hard look at my calendar and I was able to cut out about eight hours worth of standing meetings out of my week. And what surprised me through the one-on-ones and through the skip levels, I actually built better connections with my project teams and I got a much better feel for my projects. That's why I highly recommend this. Now let's face it, you'll not be able to get away from meetings completely. And a lot of meetings will continue to be virtual. Therefore, we also need to be more purposeful here and have better meetings. Which first and foremost means more focused, shorter, fewer people, clear agenda and goals. And in the meeting, when somebody lays out a proposal, normally you would open up the floor for a discussion. And it's the more extroverted people that will offer their opinion and others tend to stay quiet. Either because they first want to think through it before they speak or because they think their opinion doesn't matter in the first place. Which means it's the loudest opinion that wins, not the best. So here's what you can do. Rather than open with a discussion, take a few minutes and have everybody silently post up questions and feedback on a virtual whiteboard. Now, this can also be a shared document or a chat, depending on whatever technology you, options you have available to you. So this silent feedback gives introverts the time to think and formalize their opinion. And it feels safer for everybody to contribute. You then clarify and group the responses and use that as a starting point for a facilitated discussion. So this approach creates a safe space for people to speak up. Now you have a meeting where everybody's feedback gets captured and all feedback gets equal airtime. Being busy has become a status symbol. We're not just busy, we are crazy busy. I'm sure we've all experienced that one of the downsides of working from home is the risk of working longer hours. Therefore, also here, let's see how we can be more intentional in creating work-life integration. So it all starts with manager expectations. For example, I tell my people that they do not get paid to sit behind a desk for 40 hours. You really need to define what does success look like, as I mentioned in the section on onboarding. It sounds very simple, but have you really done that consistently with your project team? We all have different wants and needs and support systems in place. Some folks may have their loved ones around and may have no quiet space to work, or others, they live alone and it's so quiet that it's driving them up the wall. Team working agreements are a way to clarify and create a shared understanding within a team. You can think of things like no meeting blocks for head down, heads down work, or leave a five minute gap between meetings so folks can grab a coffee, have a buy a break, or you know, check in with the kids. Now, it's very important that this comes from the team. 
Let me tell you a little story. For a project that I ran, I needed to set up a weekly meeting with people in US, Europe, and Asia, which really means there's no good time slot that works. Originally, I was planning to rotate the meeting times to sort of share the pain amongst the global team. But then the team told me they actually did not want that. They felt that stability and predictability was more important for them. If that meeting is always at 10 in the evening, they can plan their life around it. Now that was their answer. Other teams may be different. The point is don't assume that you know what, you uh, that you know what your team needs. Just ask them. So with all this talk about remote and virtual and hybrid, I want to be clear. Direct face-to-face -face interaction is still invaluable. So if hybrid is the default for your team, do try to get them together on a regular basis. And you guessed it, be a bit more purposeful here as well. Focus on connecting with each other. Getting to know each other, learning, exploring, or improving together are great ways to connect. Creating a sense of purpose. Make them feel excited to be part of the team or the company. And create a sense of belonging. Make them feel like they are a valued part of the team. So we talked about a lot of things, except for the one thing you're probably wondering. What does all of this mean for the role of the project manager? In a hybrid uh, environment, the demands on managers will change. We will see more of a shift towards what PMI calls the project economy. With increased demands for influence management skills over traditional management skills and increased need for skills to build teams and get them to deliver quickly. Now for project managers, that's our core skill sets. We're used to standing up new teams with folks that do not report to us. Therefore, I think the future is bright for our profession. But in addition to that, I believe our role as project managers will need to evolve. We will need to be the creator of clarity for the team. Not just what's the task at hand, but what's the context of those tasks? What's our purpose? What are our goals? We need to be the champion of effective communication. Make sure everyone is heard so the best ideas can win. And we need to be the designer of the team work environment. Now, I can promise you that from my personal experience that this does take some upfront effort, but it has helped me deliver much better results with people that love working on my projects. And I'm convinced it can do the same for you. To start, I would suggest you just pick one or two small things to focus on. And all you have to do is be a bit more purposeful. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions or want to continue the discussion, please do reach out. The information is, uh, is below. Thank you so much.